Built for agriculture and powered by farm credit, AgDirect's financing terms are among the most flexible in the ag equipment business, matching the income stream of ag producers. Discover why more dealers and their customers are choosing AgDirect to finance, lease, and refinance ag equipment by visiting agdirect.com. I'm Managing Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. After two years of legal battles, Carlo Tenuti, the fourth generation of the Italian farm equipment manufacturer Tenuti, has regained possession of the company bearing his name. Tenuti Walgari, which was founded in 1864, has three manufacturing plants in Italy as well as operations in Russia and the U.S. with a Chinese operation in progress. Last May, Tenuti won the court-appointed auction with two other suitors and managed to reacquire Tenuti Walgari and Tenuti USA which had fallen into bankruptcy following a very unusual set of circumstances. Tenuti shared what he calls a nightmare with ag equipment intelligence in a series of correspondences last week, much of which reads like a movie script, complete with death threats, police surveillance, animal killings, and an explosion at the company's headquarters. Tenuti notes the troubles for his firm began at the end of 2013 when the company needed to look outside for capital. He decided to merge with entrepreneur Luigi Blasi, then president of B Group. B Group was active in ag machinery and held the Bargam trademarks. With an agreement signed on February 28, 2014, Carlo Tenuti agreed to sell 50% of the shares in Tenuti Walgari to B Group for 4 million euros, with the agreement to merge and strengthen the commercial network for greater effectiveness in product and product marketing policies. Tenuti says the Bargram paid the first 1 million euro immediately, which the Tenuti family put in Tenuti Walgari SPA, but the 3 million balance was never received. Within two weeks of his new partnership, Tenuti recalls he was brought to a meeting with the president of the Italian Industrial Association and informed about the infiltration of organized crime and the history of a firm buying the assets for virtually zero investment after having pushed out the owners. Tenuti says he dismissed it as a movie story and admittedly did not pay any attention to the warnings of the officers. But we immediately realized that the person was not who we thought and that his goals were not to develop the synergies of the two companies, he says. After a couple of weeks, everything the officer explained to Tenuti also happened to him, he says. After a bomb exploded in Tenuti's offices on September 6, 2014, the Tenuti family relinquished the management of the business, which was passed to Blasi and B Group. Then on February 9, 2015, Tenuti recalls the bankruptcy of the company was declared by the court of Udine, Italy. Tenuti recapped the events as follow. The trustee leased the company to NTW SRL, who then had B Group as sole partner and Luigi Blasi as general manager, from September 2015 to September 2016. In June 2016, the court announced that NTW and Blasi was awarded the purchase of 100% of the company. The failure to pay the amount of 2.4 million euros by Blasi at the due date caused the company to go to auction once again. On May 20, 2017, Tenuti along with his sons Fulvio and Gian Maria, officially returned after two and a half years of battles to acquire Tenuti Walgari and Tenuti USA. The restart of production will begin next month, says Tenuti. While the events of the last couple of years had nothing to do with the work and will of a family dedicated to farm equipment since 1864, Tenuti says he realizes it is essential to regain customer trust that had been heavily damaged. Extended coverage of the Tenuti story can be found on farmequipment.com. This week's dealers on the move include Koenig Equipment and Can Equip. Koenig, an Ohio-based John Deere dealership, is acquiring the assets and operations of Smith Implements, Inc. The addition of Smith locations in Bloomington, Franklin, Greenfield, Greensburg, Richmond, and Rushville, Indiana, brings Koenig's total locations to 13 in southwestern Ohio and southeastern Indiana. Up until recently, Koenig had been one of very few dealerships to operate both John Deere and Case IH dealerships. As we reported previously, Redline Equipment acquired Koenig's four Case IH stores in Indiana in August. On September 19th, New Holland and Case IH dealership CanEquip announced it was closing its Clay Center Kansas store in October. The dealership will have eight remaining stores. Now here's Jack Zemlicka with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. One of the more buzzworthy terms in the consumer business world is Internet of Things, or IoT for short. While a bit ambiguous, the IoT trend is taking off with integrated voice activation tools, 
and in agriculture with companies moving conceptual designs into commercial development. Wrapped around the goal of smarter farming, IoT's application in agriculture is rooted in integration, simplicity, and efficiency. But how far along is agriculture in its adoption of IoT concepts, and what does the future hold for development of these progressive platforms? Talking recently with several precision manufacturers, there wasn't a consensus on how to currently define IoT in agriculture. But companies had a clearer sense of the potential that packaging products and services can provide for both dealers and customers. Fabio Isaia, CEO of Topcon, discussed the opportunity to transition into a more integrated delivery model for hardware and software through brand consolidation rather than viewing them as independent precision pieces. We are rebuilding our software to be piece vertical application of the platform and we're going to sell them through subscriptions instead of, you know, license. So it's a big transformation. We, we, this is what we believe is going to happen everywhere. We see the big manufacturer are trying to go that way. So the market eventually will go that way. I mean, everything now is connected. We are all connected. We, we are now very used to use, to use application ourselves, like, you know, normal consumer people. And we believe that the inter agriculture market will follow as well. This is exactly what we're doing now. Isaia added that one of the transitional challenges will be getting some dealers to change their mindset on how they sell and service precision platforms going forward emphasizing that collaboration will be increasingly essential to adoption of IoT tools. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Jack. During the Farm Progress show last month, New Holland executives introduced their latest concept tractor, one powered by methane or compact natural gas. During the introduction, New Holland Agriculture brand president Carlo Lambro said the concept engine delivers the same performance and has the same durability as the standard equivalent, but with much lower running costs. It combines alternative fuels and advanced agricultural technology to create a vital link that closes the loop in the energy independent farm's virtuous cycle by running on the energy produced from the land and waste products. According to the company, the methane powered tractor offers a cost savings of up to 30%. In real field conditions, the methane powered con concept tractor produces at least 10% lower CO2 emissions and reduces overall emissions by 80% compared to a standard diesel engine. Its environmental performance further improves when fueled by biomethane produced from crop residues and waste from farm-grown energy crops, which results in a virtually zero CO2 emissions profile according to New Holland. Brett Lieberman, Vice President of North America for New Holland, says municipalities that already run their garbage trucks on CNG are likely customers as well as farmers who, are already, who already have a digester in their operation. He says there are customers in areas like Vermont who are ready today for methane power. So when you take a look at the market potential in North America, when you talk about digesters on the ag, uh, you know, on an ag application, it's probably about 400 digesters that are in the marketplace today in North America. So a pretty small scope. But we know that there are pockets in North America where we have customers that today would love to have this technology. We've already said, I'll, we've already had dealers that have come to us and said, I've got customers today that will buy that technology for their farm. As we look at compressed natural gas, we know that the accessibility of that is, call it, considerable. And especially if you get into more municipal applications where they might be running their garbage trucks on compressed natural gas, they might be running their, their buses on compressed natural gas, and we sell a considerable amount of units into the municipal space, whether it's for snow removal, whether it's for highway mowing. So the access to the fuel in those marketplaces is certainly there and available today. And we've got a product that can run and deliver the same level of performance as a diesel engine, both on horsepower and on torque curves, while uh, running at a lower operating cost and also reducing emissions on methane or compressed natural gas by about 10% when it comes to CO2 and total emissions by about 80%. So a considerable improvement when we talk about being a sustainable clean energy leader that is a, a significant reduction from where we are today. We reached out to Brian Carpenter, General Manager of Champlain Valley Equipment, a five-store New Holland dealership in Vermont, to get a dealer's perspective on the introduction. 
He's excited about the new technology and says, Vermont is at the forefront of renewable clean energy and having a supplier providing our customer base with an additional tool to reduce their footprint is progress that feels right. We are in an environment where our producers are under a mandate to reduce emissions, runoff, smell, noise, etc. The company claims the tractor could be ready for production within three years. The ag equipment market in Europe is experiencing an economic comeback in numerous markets, according to VDMA Managing Director Dr. Bern Scherer. He says double-digit growth rates in incoming orders from Germany and abroad are an important indicator of a sustainable upswing. In the first half of 2017, German agricultural machinery and tractor manufacturers saw a 7% increase in sales to just over 4.5 billion euros, or $5.39 billion. The German Association reports that overall deliveries to German dealers and international distribution partners were noticeably higher than in corresponding period last year. The CEMA Business Climate Index, based on a monthly survey of executives in the European agricultural machinery industry, is currently at a peak level. In the view of just over 84% of the managers surveyed, the industry is clearly on a growth course. This peak value of the index published by the European Umbrella Organization, CEMA, corresponds to that of the boom year 2012. This is certainly not a flash in the pan, since the future forecast is just as positive as the assessment of current business, says Scherer. And now from the Implement and Tractor archives. In 1938, Harry Ferguson demonstrated his Ferguson-Brown tractor, a joint venture between Harry Ferguson and David Brown. It was the production version of Ferguson's black tractor, which was the first to incorporate the hydraulic three-point hitch and integrated implements. While the Ferguson Brown was somewhat smaller than the Fordson and about twice as expensive, the performance was better enough to convince Henry Ford to build the 9N tra Ford tractor featuring the Ferguson system. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lessonermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us.